This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. For our full disclosure, visit nc midwifery.com. Got it. Hey, Angie. Hmm. Are you almost done with that application? I thought I was. <laughs> Until you started filling it out? Yes. It's like the application that never ends. And it's, it just goes on and on, on my, my friend. friend. I feel a song coming. Right? You don't have license. Oh, seriously. Seriously. No. I know. Welcome back to another episode of More About Birth here with our hosts, Shannon Bennett and Angie Hansen. It's an amazing journey. I don't know if journey is the right word. I don't know if amazing is the right (laughs) word. (laughs) Something else. We're picking Angie's brain today about her midwifery journey because everybody's been asking me more questions about when's Angie going to be done? What's she going to do? So is this like a trial? So. Is she on trial you know, right now? Kind of, sort of. I'm just watching body language. So if you're not watching the video podcast, I'm I trying, like to watch the body language. I'm trying to give <laughs> her or have some leverage over her. So she like <laughs> said this publicly oh. so that she has to follow through with this. Because how many times have you told me you're going to quit and you're done? I've Ten? lost count. Ten? More? More. There's, just so you know, there's only... Four of each card in the deck, so you can only play it four times. So remind me, why did you want to become a midwife in the first place? That's and a great what question. What was the purpose? Maybe this will help me. Um. It'll rejuvenate you. <laughs> It'll help you find, find your motivation passion. for finishing this crazy Is this too thing. much reality for your podcast, More probably. About Birth? Probably. Yeah, no. this is probably. Nobody wants to see this grumpy side. We're both kind this of grumpy, grumpy today. negative side. <laughs> well, ex- so in all fairness, right? Sorry, so for guys. Our, for our listeners, it's not exactly been an easy <clears throat> twelve months. You know, Angie's doing school. We've gone through what we went through. Twelve months. I'm Six saying years. I'm talking about the last twelve <laughs> oh. months. As you're trying to finish this, you know, last portion, well, this yeah, has not been an easy journey for any of us. Obstacles to getting her birth observations at the hospital in, and just a lot of different things. But today we're going to talk to Angie about (laughs) kind of like where her passion started for midwifery, why she decided to go to school and kind of where she's at in the journey. So hopefully this will like just pump you up to get it done because she's in the middle of filling out like a 40 some page. 40? Well, or skill. 200? (laughs) It's, It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Anyways, it just never ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. <laughs> Some people started filling it out, not knowing what it was. Seriously, and not they'll continue knowing. continue filling it forever just because. <laughs> so tell Ooh. us, go back to when do, do, you do, first do. had the passion for midwifery. Like, when oh. did you start thinking about it? Were you five? No. No. You uh-huh. 20? No, it's funny because... I always tell people, and my mom would know better than anybody else, but we joke about how almost of everybody that we knew, I would have been the last, the least likely person to do this job. Why? Why? Because I did not like anything medical. I didn't like blood. I didn't like, (laughs) like, I just. But it's happy blood. I don't like mess. I don't like. Yeah, I just was not, I would have been the last person. So obviously that's not the focus though, the birth. I don't think that's, that's just like me. I don't like blood either. I can't stand it's happy it, but, blood. <laughs> but there must have been something else about this whole experience. Yeah, well, obviously the parts, there's parts of the process that overcome all that. I don't think anybody probably, well, I shouldn't say anybody, probably most people don't go into the medical field because they like love bodily fluids or something uh, when um, birth has its bodily fluids oh, yeah but yeah. there's all kinds of humor in those bodily there is functions. and we laugh about it <laughs> when um, did you first notice that you were even thinking about yeah, that path well so my oldest daughter was born 11 years ago and We had a home birth with her and we had just a really wonderful experience. We had a certified professional midwife um, in Minneapolis and really just fell in love with that model of birth, researched it quite a bit. Because you didn't start out with a midwife. No. In fact, 
I started, I did the first 12 weeks of my, of that pregnancy with an OB, mm -hmm. just the traditional route, did our first ultrasound in that office, um, very standard of care. And that OB was nice and she was pleasant, but it was night and day difference from the care we got with our midwife and, um, had a long, but wonderful birth experience. Mm -hmm. It was just beautiful. And I fell in love with natural birth and with that model of birth from that time. And I think, um, even though I didn't go public or like official with it, I kind of became, you know, in my circle of friends, a crusader for raising awareness. You know, you were a birth junkie. From I that was. Point on. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I loved birth stories. Um, I just, I wanted to raise awareness for this model. So that was kind of where it started. And then we were planning on moving overseas full time at that point. And I had a couple of friends who were doing that as well. Mm -hmm. And they started doing a little bit of training with that midwife that had delivered my baby um, to take as a tool overseas with them, um, you know, to use in places where right. there's a high maternal right. and infant death rate. Um, and so that kind of piqued my interest. I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Did you start studying at that point? Not or at reading all. about it? Or? I mean, all along the way, um, just because we kind of got on that path of being mm -hmm. natural care oriented, mm -hmm. I was always reading stuff here and there just for fun, but not like textbooks or, okay. you know. So no, I wasn't studying. I wasn't really thinking seriously about becoming a midwife, but I... When that did that moment come my interest? Then? I don't know if it was that a you, moment. It was more of just a there, it journey. Just a progression. Well, so then we moved here to Washington, and I had my second baby with Shannon. And I think it was after that baby that I really started thinking about it more seriously. And I know you and another midwife in the area were looking for assistance at that mm -hmm. time. It's always hard to find good assistance, mm -hmm. right? There's always a shortage of them. Birth junkies make really good assistance. Yeah. So um, I started talking to Shannon about, you know, what this process looks like. And you pointed me in the direction of a book called Paths to Becoming a yep, Midwife. I love that book. I, I loved it too. It was great. It kind of... Um, well, it outlines the different routes into yes. midwifery. Yeah. Midwifery. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, exactly. Um, so that was a good sound effect. Nurse midwifery. Oh, I feel like oh, my oh. lips are stuck together <laughs> today like dry <laughs> cotton. Um, yeah, direct entry as opposed to becoming a nurse and then a midwife mm -hmm. as opposed to being a lay midwife. It's a yep. good book. Yeah, it really is. It was helpful. And it was kind of one of those prerequisite things too because I know you – like to have your students do a certain amount of work before mm -hmm. you commit to training mm -hmm. them, which totally makes sense. Um, because otherwise you would spend your entire life going through the first 5% of training with people. And right. Then, and then a lot of people drop yeah. out. It yeah. is not for the faint of heart. Oh, is it not? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess that's where it started. And, you know, since then, um, our, plans for moving overseas has kind mm -hmm. of been shelved. I really hope and believe that at some point we will get to take this skill and use it in a place yeah. where there is a higher maternal death rate, um, you know, and be a blessing in that way. But for now we're here and I already had my foot in the door with researching schools. And so mm -hmm. we just decided to finish. And since then, as you can see, it's developed into quite a thing. The student thing and <laughs> now student an official midwife. midwife. So did it increase as your kids were getting older or you were getting further, where, further away from having more kids? Did it increase your desire to be there with other people's experience? Is that part of it? Not really, honestly. Because you had another baby after. Yeah, yeah. We had, had our decided. third kind of in the middle of starting to assist and yeah. and walk through those Actually, doors. I remember you assisting when you were really pregnant. Oh, yeah. And thinking she is going to be so tired by the uh -huh. end of this birth. Oh, yes. Why did you even choose the route? that you went, which explain the route that you went. So the main two branches um, of school is like direct entry midwifery, which is out of hospital midwifery, which, um, you know, you can be a lay midwife. The credential that Shannon started out with and that I'm going for is the CPM, Certified Professional Midwife. So that's kind of one big branch. Mm -hmm. And the other big branch is that the other main one is, is 
um, a CNM, Certified Nurse Midwife, mm -hmm. which has the nursing degree built into it. And nurse midwives do practice out of hospital, but I would say... Birth centers. I would say the majority of the nurse midwives are probably in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Or birth centers, yeah. And is, I don't that because, is that because they have the nurse part beast and then the, the door is open for um, them? Well, to be totally honest, as a nurse midwife, you rotate call being yep. on call with other nurse midwives. And as a wow. solo home birth midwife, you're just on call all the time forever. Mm -hmm. So the, and then in different states have licensure. So yep. Washington state, you can become licensed. Idaho, you can become licensed as a right. midwife, which gives you additional privileges of carrying certain medications and doing certain procedures and things. Right. But after researching, you know, those mm. two main branches and the book that I mentioned lays those out really well. Um, you know, my ex personal experience was with CPMs mm -hmm. and we just loved that model of care. We loved the out of hospital birth model. And so that's where my heart was. And that's what made the most sense for me. Um, What's it look like financially, the comparison between direct entry midwifery versus nurse midwifery or just better yet? doing a school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's huge. So for my, um, you know, and some people do direct entry midwifery and they never do any school of any kind. It's apprenticeship. It's just based, apprenticeship right. based model. Um, mine was kind of a hybrid as was yours mm -hmm. where it's, it's heavily apprenticeship based model, but then with the academics, yeah, but then in, you, right. you have a school that lays out some of your academics mm -hmm. for you. Right. So the school that I chose um, was online and it was work at your own pace. And so, which works well when you already have a family. Exactly. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you know, you could get your foot in the door and start working towards the CPM, but mm -hmm. not have it be quite so regimented, mm -hmm. which has its pros and cons. All of these routes, every single one of them has their pros and cons. <laughs> so, what does it really look like, Angie? Ooh, oh my goodness. It looks, it's easy. It was a piece us, of cake, right? It looks like tell our us. house is falling apart and we can't have anyone over <laughs> because you can. She won't let anybody come over. <laughs> because because right when you finally get it on your list to do it, then you get called from Shannon going, guess what? Yeah, or you sit on the couch yeah. staring into space. Yeah. Trying to tired, trying to find yourself. Eating things that you shouldn't so be eating. Does it uh, so are these then passed based on what would fit a mom that already has kids or would, did you choose this path because you just liked the model better? I, both. I liked the model better, mm -hmm. but the school that I had really advertised this for moms. I mean, okay. you know, one of the main pictures they have is a mom nursing her baby with a textbook open on the side. So <laughs> yep. this is like, yeah, this Which is, is reality. Been this there. is me. Yeah. Um, and the bonus to doing an unaccredited school the way that I did is the cost is significantly... So Cheaper. Accredited versus unaccredited. There is a program called MEAC that accreditates colleges or programs so that by the time you get done, because they're accredited, you can go directly into licensure in the state that you're in. Whereas unaccredited, it's not that you're really getting a lesser education. It's just that you have to fill out what Angie's filling out right now, which Ooh. is this ginormous portfolio to prove all yeah. of the things that you've learned that you're proficient in right. it. And is that state to and state? A, no, this is national certification. This is okay. to get the CPM. The North American Registry right. of Midwives. And, and then so you, we, a, we experience every state has its own requirements too, right? Oh yeah, every too, state. Right? So, yeah, some are illegal even. Yeah. Um, so in Washington state, it's the North American Registry of Midwives exam that you take for licensure and for it's the same exam to get your certified professional midwife certificate. That's a mouthful. Oh, uh, yeah. Not yeah. that this is making sense to anybody besides people that want to uh -huh. be midwives, but, but it's anyways, intense. but it's, but the thing is, I think for our audience, or at least for me, it's always fascinating to hear, to hear what you have to go through. Like, you know, how many births and how many you call it catches and well, all that right. stuff. And that's I fascinating to me. I don't want anyone to ever think that because you're not going to a school that's accredited, that you're getting a subpar education because no. I'm telling you what, it's intense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very thorough. And again, I was, I'm sorry, but I was even no, told that the program that I went through that is not 
the MEAC accredited was actually compared to someone who went to Bastyr to one of the accredited programs. And they said, it's not only comparable, but it even has more mm -hmm. components to it. And I yeah. think, I think one of the things, at least looking back, cause I did correspondence so I can relate. Right. Um, I, I get the point because I have close friends that went to regular schools and there's the credit program. I think it really comes down to how do you measure it? You know, measuring your experience. I've had a front row seat, right. hundreds of hours invested hands on with someone showing you how to do it. Which and is then what all this of the, is all about. yeah. And then all the classes where I did everything, you know, it was book work, all correspondence. Yeah. You do your academics and yeah. then you do your apprenticeship, your hands on for. Yeah. My hands on training was just as important to me as the book work. And I think it's just a measuring thing. I liked your model. Well, because styles of learning too. I mean, for me, that style of learning fit me better. Yeah. And, you know, I, having done this, I mean, <laughs> now that I'm at the end and trying to fill out this 200 plus page application oh. and it's, it really is a pain. It's a big, big process. It's, it's more of a portfolio of than an application, right. but Along the way, I have absolutely fallen in love with the apprenticeship-based model. It's an ancient model. It's mm -hmm. been around as long as the earth has been around. And it's amazing to me how much sense it makes. Like, it, it's so focused in, on exactly what you need for real life. Because as you're modeling well, an you're, expert and someone that's already doing it, you're and not you're wasting learning. time. You're doing your academics as you're doing the hands-on at the same time out in the field. Yep. So it it sticks better. And plus know. this model that you have with Shannon, you get podcasting credits, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you too. I'll have to write that into I know, Norm you, and Yeah, exactly. On. Let's see who else has the Can credits you that you have. Can you wave a few pages that of on. my application <laughs> for this? I could have just imagined they went, wow, we never credit thought about podcasting yeah. credits. So no, how many hours do you think that you've put in? I, I have an idea. But I what have do you, no idea. Okay. So I know for a fact that at this point you've put in over 2000 clinical hours. Wow. In the field hours. Yeah. That's incredible. You've attended how many births? About 85. Yeah. You've done how many prenatals? Oh, hundreds and hundreds. I, how many so postpartums? Many. Like Probably hundreds again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Newborn yeah. exams? Yeah, more than 40. Well, yeah. I've done almost as many as births. So. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I. that's the other thing with this CPM route is no joke. I mean, they are so thorough. And I've heard that, you know, by the time you're done, you have more training than some of the people that deliver babies in hospitals. Um, it's just I very just thorough. I just spoke with a CNM the other day, and she told me the number of births that they had to have in order to start practicing compared to the number of births that we have to have to start practicing. And we needed more because yeah. it's a, an apprentice based They're relying program. more on, yeah, they're relying more on the- Our, Us getting yeah, more getting experience. More done. Yeah. Right. The thing that um, also just has so impressed me about the apprenticeship model is how much you absorb, even when you're not quote unquote training, or even when you feel like your brain's not turned on. I mean, Shannon said to me a mm -hmm. hundred times, you know, so much more than you think you do. Yep. And I don't, you know, you don't think that you do, but it's amazing yep. how much you don't realize how much you're absorbing just logging the hours together. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of all the years of being in church and listening to the word preached yeah. and reading your Bible. And you're going, I just don't, I don't know that much. Yeah. But something comes up and there it is. Mm -hmm. You know it. It's I think the other there. thing too, guys, is that what I've learned is that there, you come to a point where you're listening, like learning. Then there's this moment where you have like a, you have a, an opinion. Right, uh -huh. because you've been there so many times. Oh, she has and, her opinion. And no, but listen. And then what happens is that you find yourself having to kind of pull back because you now are engaged. Like I've done this, I've seen this. Mm -hmm. I have a thought here. I want to add something. It's almost like I kind of feel, you know, as a husband being around a midwife all the time. You don't even realize sometimes what you know until you're having the conversation. And I'll remember three other times we've had this conversation. Like she was talking today about the cost of one journey compared. Of the journey that Angie's taken. We've had this. I had deja vu today. We've had this conversation before because right. we talked about it. Yeah. So did we cover that? We've talked about so many things. Uh, we didn't before exactly. we got. We started. started talking about how so much it costs. Just for a frame of reference, my um, 
you know, non-accredited modules that I purchased um, Which to, are do, very thorough. to do the route that I did was, I don't remember the exact, but it was somewhere around $2,000 and then plus your your textbooks, mm-hmm. which is a few hundred maybe, um, versus now that that school that I started with has since become accredited, it's around twenty one thousand plus books. Wow! And then there's Same another education. One of the um, larger, most well known um, midwifery schools in the United States. Uh, we asked our friend who's going to it was about twenty seven thousand. Now, why would you think that is that they go from the accreditation? Does it cost them more? Oh, there's carry a lot the accreditation involved. And yeah. there's a lot, there's involved. A lot okay. involved. Oh, yeah, I can't even imagine. And I mean, the education's great at through all of these different routes, mm-hmm. but it's just pros and it's cons. It's like for me, I I had a family, I had a busy life, and I wanted to be able to do this at my own pace. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it just worked perfectly for me. Mm-hmm. It took me longer than the minimal three years. Yep. Because I had a family and then had another baby. Me too. <laughs> And that's okay because however long it takes. But I was going to tell you, I have noticed lately he was talking about about opinion. Uh About opinion. No, this is good because you remember way back when when I told you that somewhere along the way you're going to look at something I do the way I do it or the method that I use and you're going to go, when I'm the midwife, (laughs) I'm going to do it this way. And that's awesome because I've noticed that lately that you do have your own style now. You don't. You don't mimic what I do. You've developed your own midwifery style, and I love it. Mm. So it's just you you find your rhythm, and I think that's what's really cool about you. You, you have are found finding your rhythm. rhythm. What is your plan now? I mean, what do you see the fu- in the near future? <laughs> Wouldn't we all like to know? <laughs> Come um, on, Angie. Well, so uh, the frustrating part, we sat down to actually work on finishing up my application just a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. And I was so frustrated and grumpy. Shannon wanted to kick me out of her house. I told her to put her big girl panties on and get over I it. I was like, I'm, I'm, you know, you. I thought we were gonna finish and go get our no. things notarized. Nope. And it was like there's this whole section that we did wrong that we have to fix. And I was just done. Like I feel like. I'm at the end and it's. Supposed I know, but to then, be done. then I had this moment of wisdom and I thought of this movie scene, and I. Made you watch no, it. Keith thought of this movie scene. And I knew that it would help you, right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, it just, yeah, it is it's the application like that never ends. Filling that out is like cleaning house. It's like all you're going to do is mop the floor, right? Well, to mop the floor, you have to move the stuff off the floor. And to move it off the floor, you have to find a place yeah. to put and it. And I think one of the things, place to put it, in all fairness, Angie, what I was trying to say to you the other day in a movie, because I felt like I could say it better than me, is that if you forget the goal, if you forget where you're going and you get focused on just the task at hand, none of us want to do the task at hand. So I think you have to kind of keep the end game in mind. And that's what I felt like you kind of lost sight of when you realized that there was more uh, to the run, yeah. <laughs> to the race. Yeah. See one. I got to cut out for a minute, continue this conversation. I have a cake in the oven. What? Yeah. Is it time? How are okay, we going to continue? Keith, it's just me and you. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, my goodness. So I have a question for you. You ready for this? Okay. So how much of um, just the relationship with Shannon and being, you know, in the game motivated you to become a midwife? Because obviously that can't be the reason, but how much of an impact did that have? Oh, that's such a good question. I love that because I didn't really say that at the beginning. But, you know, besides just loving this model of care, one of the things that I think pushed me over the edge to, she should be here to hear this. One of the things that pushed me over the edge towards actually wanting to go through this crazy process and do this thing was because these midwives that had served us and served our family during our births were some of the most incredible quality people that I had been around. So it was, it was a very personal aspect. It wasn't just the, the midwifery and the, you know, the model of birth, it was also these incredible women that have impacted me and to see them serving, to see them having these incredible skills that can assist people at this really crucial time of life. I just thought, man, if there's any way that I could be to somebody else, what these women were to me, that would be a dream come true. Like they just have lived a quality 
of life that I can only dream about because right. I don't see myself as that competent of a person. But um, I think it's hard sometimes because you maybe you're like me that you feel like you're your worst critic, right? Well, you know, and we have a tendency to put other people who are mentors on a pedestal that they don't even feel like they can. And I've mm. told you that to. I feel like an imposter still some days. Yeah. <laughs> Because the more that you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about how much you were an uh, influence um, in Were you her... talking about me while I was gone? Yeah, of course. And she you said... You <laughs> asked me about what pushed right. me over the edge. And Keith asked me a question that like pushed me over the edge into deciding to pursue this. Uh -huh. And it was my first midwife and you. It wasn't just Aww. the model of care. It was seeing the type of women that you were and the way that you served families at that junction in their life. And hmm. I just, that personal quality, I, I don't know. I just thought these are some of the most capable people I've ever met. And boy, did we have you fooled. I just like, man, <laughs> it would be a dream come true to be able to become a person that was even remotely like and that. here's the so, thing oh. i think that is the age-old model that i think we forget you you meet someone yeah who has some things that you go wow that's who i want to be when i grow up right and right it's right. these real people that you get the chance to meet in the trenches and those are important people in your life too and sometimes they're the ones that draw you out they're the ones that draw you up and i think that's Definitely. the age-old thing yeah. So. Well, and that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm not doing a very good job verbalizing, <laughs> but the apprenticeship based <laughs> model, you know, you you don't apprentice with someone just because they have skills that you want to mirror. An apprenticeship is so much more than that. Right. You absorb some of that person's soul and they're probably going to absorb some of yours. And so it yeah. becomes this very connected. Well, we've become really good friends. Yeah. I mean, you're the age of my kids. But I can only imagine how it's going to elevate your ability to mentor people, bringing her in. I it. don't know if people understand our humor sometimes. That's so fine. true. We did a home visit the other night. Yep. And <laughs> what were we laughing about? Oh, I don't know. Zoe. I wrote the wrong date. The dog is licking your feet. Um, I wrote the wrong date down for somebody's birth. No, I was like, yeah. it was 422. No, it was 1912. It was April. <laughs> it's April. And, and I'm writing too. And I'm going, I'm like, Sierra, this is really cool. Look, 222. Oh my gosh. 20. 21. And then you told go, on yourself. That's kind of a cool birthday. Too bad it's not 222. 22. And that's what you're going to put on the birth certificate, too, maybe? Um, yeah. <laughs> so Angie was not at, at that birth. So she's reading the notes and goes, <sighs> She goes, Shannon, look at this. What is this? And I go, What? She's like, Do you see anything wrong with this? I'm like, No. What's wrong? <laughs> and then <laughs> I saw it. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So we were. In our normal we were cracking up and this feeling. And I don't know. And, and here's the deal. Like, what is your I can problem? relate. I can relate to your audience, but I also can relate to the fact that I don't know that you necessarily need to in, understand the humor. You guys make me laugh. And I think you well, sometimes make okay. the audience laugh. You got to It doesn't have to make sense. If people are like, I don't want them at my birth because they're very incompetent. I'm sorry. My brain is in my toes right now because the, the dog, dog will not stop licking, licking my her feet. toes <laughs> oh my goodness she's okay. on my lap now she's been captivated she's she's, <laughs> she's gonna get on the mic here um yeah we anyways. need to wrap this up anyways, anyways. so to, to answer your question i i don't even want to say it out loud because then someone's gonna hold me to it but uh -oh. the that was my whole, outline whole is point Although I've been saying it for like a year now, but actually finish this application and mail it off out of my life. <laughs> take your exam. Take my exam. Pass my exam, right? Oh, no Please, problem. Please, Lord, help no me problem. pass the exam. And um, just keep doing what we're doing, except, you know, I'm going to be taking on my own clients. Just, you know, building slowly, probably mm -hmm. just one a month right now, but... Um, taking some of the folks that Shannon cannot fit in. And so hopefully that'll be a blessing to people because it's gonna be a you're blessing still going to get both of us. We're still going to always <laughs> yeah. be at birth together, I which think, is amazing. Angie, I think it's incredible because, you know, the other option would be to say no. Now, you know, we get to say yes to their need and not have to pass them mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's just continuing saying yes to what you guys have a heart to do. I and think we have awesome. so much fun together. We really do. Yeah. yeah. It's not just that we enjoy birth. We have fun together. Yeah. If we weren't having fun together, I would have quit a long time ago. So Angie, what's the date of turning the application in? Oh, I wish I knew because well, for me, it was when it was two <laughs> days ago. <laughs> I would say we could pull it off by June 1st. Oh, yes. Dang. That's going to be such a great yes. day. We should celebrate. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, you know what I was just thinking? We blew it because we should have taken pictures for y'all. But Shannon and I went through just trying to make it feel homey, you know, like include <laughs> the folks at home. Um we put together, we started putting together my midwifery bags, which was like a we momentous show. Yeah, that was cool. I saw it. It was, in my, like, it was I, in my living room. My whole so living room was I had covered. to vacate the living room because there was stuff everywhere. Like I've got equipment. I've got bags that She's are mine official. that are ready to go out the door, which yeah. is just kind of that surreal. Is, that but is cool. It's like you got your, for you. You, have your, you have your tank. You know how to drive it. Now I can, can take a off. picture of my <laughs> messy, messy stairs because we I've dropped those bags on my stairs and they're still sitting. There, so they're okay, still I'll commit us here. I think we should have a little, you know, her taking her bags into her car. We should have that there shot for our season finale, <laughs> which, uh, by the way, our season finale is just right around the corner. Yes. Make sure you tune weeks into that. Away, don't yeah. miss it. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, you could really help us out if you haven't subscribed already to subscribe. Um, it means a lot to us and motivates us to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. help us out. Share it. Let your friends know about it, especially people yeah, you think would benefit Facebook about page. this. Yeah. Yeah. So share cool. it on your Facebook page. Well, is that so you asked her? You, I mean, she's off the hot seat now. Is it? Is it getting hot? <laughs> Is he? No. You're off the hot seat. So, yeah. yep, we will wrap this up. And if you see Angie, say, hey, Angie, have you turned your application in <laughs> Get yet? Get it together. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, we just appreciate all of you guys. And for anybody that's been mm -hmm. following us from the beginning, thank you. And um, yeah, we just, we really appreciate you being a part of this. And honestly, if anybody has any questions about midwifery being a student becoming an assistant call angie any <laughs> i was gonna say us but get in touch with call us angie. through the website and we will connect with you and answer your questions yeah we, we will love to help. i'm just teasing all righty so, thanks guys. we'll see you next time for our finale bye bye, bye. <laughs> Zoe's perfect you. timing well, with Zoe, we'll say goodbye to to this episode of More About Birth. We want to invite you to our season finale for season two. That'll be Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 at noon. We will be live on both More About Birth on YouTube and Natural Care Midwifery Facebook. We sure hope you'll join us live again at noon, June 9th, Wednesday. We hope to see you then. This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. Please check out our full disclosure on nc-midwifery.com.